Hey there. Let's see if I'm actually streaming. Plus one, two, three. Alright, looks like it. <clears throat> so this game is called Getting Over It with Bennett Body. Um, and I believe that the history of this game is, uh, everything I've learned from this game is from uh, a podcast I listen to called The Giant Bombcast. And <clears throat> I have a coworker who doesn't work, really work with me directly. And he said, well, I know you stream, Carl. Have you played Getting Over with Bennett Body? And I was like, I actually heard about this on the Bombcast. I heard it very frustrating. And since all the kids are doing it, um, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and give this a whirl. So all I've done is uh, I've launched the game one other time, and I uh, played around with the mouse and played around with this little hammer, um, and didn't get very far up the mountain, um, but I did give it a try. So this is not my first uh, attempt at playing getting over it and it fought it. So, um, the premise of this game is that you are a man, a torso, in a kettle. It looks like a kettle. And um, the only way of getting around is you have a sledgehammer. And you have to climb them out. That's it. And along the way, I think you have a... a the creator of the game, Bennett Foddy, who created this game based off of a game called Sexy Hiking, which I have not played either. Um, so, uh, the way that you control this game, um, there's no keyboard control, it's all the mouse, and you move the mouse, and you hit the hammer. Um, that's it. That's, that's the game. I don't know if you can see the white circle around the hammer, but that's my mouse moving, and the hammer moves with the circle. So, without further ado, I'm going to attempt to climb the mountain, um, and climb up. First, I think we have to climb up this mountain. And that's oh. all there is. Um, and people say this game is really frustrating, but I actually haven't seen it yet. It's not really that difficult. It doesn't mean you just, you, uh, you just use your hammer and... There's no feeling more intense than starting over. If you deleted your homework the day before it was due, as I have, or if you left your wallet at home and you have to go back after spending an hour in the commute, if you won some money at the casino and then put all your winnings on red but it came up black, if you got your best shirt dry cleaned before a wedding and then immediately dropped food on it, if you won an argument with a friend and then later discovered that they just returned to their original view, Starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, like if you've already had a bad day, then what you're about to go through might be too much. Feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. All right, thanks for coming with me on this trip. I'll understand if you have to take a break at any point. Just find a safe place to stop and quit the game. And don't worry, I'll save your progress always, even your mistakes. This game is a homage to a free game that came out in 2002, titled Sexy Hiking. Right. The author of that game was Jazuo, a mysterious Czech designer who was known at the time as the father of B-games. And B-games are rough assemblages of found objects. Designers slap them together very quickly and freely, and they're often too rough and unfriendly to gain much of a following. They're built more for the joy of building them than as polished products. Every once in a while, this guy Bennett Foddy will peek up and will speak up and uh, have a little words of wisdom for you. In a certain way, sexy hiking is the perfect embodiment of a B game. It's built almost entirely out of found and recycled parts, and it's one of the most unusual and unfriendly games of its time. In it, your task is simply to drag yourself up a mountain with a hammer. And that act of climbing in the digital world or in real life, has certain essential properties that give the game its flavor. 
No amount of forward progress is guaranteed. Some cliffs are too sheer or too slippery. And the player is constantly, unremittingly in danger of falling and losing everything. And another thing, I haven't watched any streams of this game, so all progress that I've figured out how to make or have been on my own. Um, I haven't watched any quick looks, I haven't watched anything. The only thing I've seen of this game is what I've done. And I'm not necessarily proud, but I just want you to know in case you were thinking maybe that I'm... Anyway, when you start sexy hiking, you're standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. It might take you an hour to get over that tree, and a lot of people never got past it. You prod and you poke at it, exploring the limits of your reach and your strength, trying to find a way up and over. And there's a sense of truth in that lack of compromise. Most obstacles in video game worlds are fake. You can be completely confident in your ability to get through them once you have the correct method or the correct equipment or just by spending enough time. In that sense, every pixelated obstacle in sexy hiking is real. The obstacles in sexy hiking are unyielding, and that makes the game uniquely frustrating. But I'm not sure Jazuo intended to make a frustrating game. The frustration is just essential to the act of climbing, and it's authentic to the process of building a game about climbing. A funny thing happened to me as I was building this mountain. I'd have an idea for a new obstacle, and I'd build it, test it, and it would usually turn out to be unreasonably hard. But I couldn't bring myself to make it easier. It already felt like my inability to get past the new obstacle was my fault as a player rather than as a builder. Imaginary mountains build themselves from our efforts to climb them. And it's our repeated attempts to reach the summit that turns those mountains into something real. So this is as far as I've gotten. Um, this right here, I have not figured out how to get past this. Um, the first time I played it, I got this far and this I have zero idea how to get past. So I'm gonna... On the other side of this rock, this way, then you fall down. Oh. Uh, and items in this game have uh, properties, like texture properties. So, like, this is a little slippery. So, speaking of that, you've got this left side here, which is uh, obviously a lot rougher than this side over here. So I'm assuming that you want to put your kettle ass against... When you're building a video game world, you're building with ideas. And that can be like working with quickset cement. You mold your ideas into a certain shape that can be played with. And in the process of playing with them, they begin to harden and set until they're immutable, like rock. And at that point, you can't change the world. Not without breaking it into pieces and starting fresh with new ideas. You've done this part before. You know it's possible. Just do what you did the first time. This is the hard part here. I don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, shit! What? Oh. Oh. 
Oh, oh you just lost a lot of progress. Oh my That's a gosh. deep frustration. A real punch in the gut. What? <clears throat> Just like that, I've lost a lot of progress. Oof, sorry about that. <laughs> He's such Whoop. an asshole. He's so nice ah. about it too. Oh, uh, that's the thing that drives me insane. I guess it's frustrating Whoop. for you too, right? Like, I don't know. I haven't watched anyone play this game. I don't know if it's fun to watch someone lose all this progress. <clears throat> This game I mm. Oh, it happened again. Keep on trying. Don't let it get to you. Ah. I created a game called Quap, and that game was impossible for me. I had no idea how to get the new run. Because you would control each of his limbs with the Whoop. keyboard. Also in the chat, if you want to goad me or try to get me to Whoop. be upset. Whoop. What is the more precision may need to be necessary for this? Like, <clears throat> oh shit.
to take a sip. How do I get up this damn chasm? Ah. Maybe I'm approaching this wrong. Like, how else would you? How else would you get up this damn? You do it. You gotta use the damn lights. I'll do that. That would have knocked me right on off. I feel like I've made some progress here. Come on, climb. 
climb up the dam. <gasps> no! This thing that we call failure is not the falling down, but the staying down. Mary Pickford. Oh my god. <laughs> I baited up the fucking chasm. <laughs> oh no. I thought that tree would have grabbed me. Let's 
good time, boys. Hey, buddy. Ten dollar shoe fits my feet. A ten dollar shoe fits my feet. Ten dollar shoe fits my feet, and I ain't going to be treated this way. Going where the weather suits my clothes. I'm going where the weather suits my clothes. I'm going where the weather suits my clothes, and I ain't going to be treated this way. Holy day, holy day. The soul would have no rainbow had the eyes no tears. John Vance Cheney. I feel now is the happiness I had before. That's the deal. C.S. Lewis. I feel within me a peace above all earthly dignities, a still and quiet conscience. William Shakespeare. You cannot now believe that you will ever feel better. But this is not true. You're sure to be happy again. And knowing this, truly believing it, will make you less miserable now. Abraham Lincoln. Oh. What? 
catch myself. Oh. So, I don't know where it was. Yeah, for some reason, this is How am I going to get up that damn mountain? <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm going to push down and then launch myself up, but I feel like I'm gonna hit this damn rock face. I'm gonna try to do that and then swing up. For years now, oh people God. have been predicting oh. that games would soon be made out of prefabricated objects, Shit. bought in a store and assembled into a world. And for the most part, that hasn't happened because the objects in the stores are trash. I don't mean they look bad or that they're badly made, although a lot of them are. I mean they're trash in the way that food becomes trash as soon as you put it in the sink. Things are made to be consumed and used in a certain context. And once the moment is gone, they transform into garbage. In the context of technology, those moments pass by in seconds. Over time, we've poured more and more refuse into this vast digital landfill that we call the internet. It now vastly outnumbers and outweighs the things that are fresh and untainted and unused. When everything around us is cultural trash, trash becomes the new medium, the lingua franca of the digital age. And you can build culture out of trash, but only trash culture. B games, B movies, B music, B philosophy. Maybe this is what digital culture is. A monstrous mountain of trash, the ash heap of creativity's fountain. A landfill with everything we ever thought of in it. Grand, infinite and unsorted. Oh. Oh, I feel like I've made a pretty good bit. Just a sec. I feel very accomplished here. I think I'm winning some of this work for cards too.
Amen. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. Let me cry. There's 3D models of breakfast, Gen X's fanfic novels, Scan magazines, green screen Shia LaBeouf, banned snuff scenes on Live League, Facebook's got lifelike bots with unbranded adverts and candid shots of Kanye and Taylor Swift mashups, car crash epic failed GIFs, Russian dashcam vids, discussions of McRibs, discarded, forgotten, unrecycled, muddled, rotten, untitled. Everything's fresh for about six seconds, until some newer thing beckons, and we hit refresh. And there's years of persevering, disappearing into the pile, out of style, out of sight. Oh. To live is to suffer. To survive is to find some meaning in the suffering. Friedrich Nietzsche. Well, this has been getting over. I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer. I'm going to stop streaming this. I hope you learned something. I don't care what you learned, but I just hope you learned something. Have a good night.